Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast, and I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, we talk about four types of freedom, time, financial, location, health, freedom, and in the light, I'm always interviewing entrepreneurs, successful business owners, people doing things on the cutting edge and shaping the world. So today we have Harris Gubin, and um, he's going to talk to us all about franchising. So what is a franchise? How to start one? How to finance it? Pros and cons? Should I get one? So it's going to be a really interesting discussion. Uh, Franchising, you have a lot of opportunities, and I'm happy to welcome Harris to the show. Welcome. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. It's good to be with you. I know uh, we had connected through Podmatch and... um, and tell us more about your franchising, um, how you got started, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I have a pretty unique path. I came from a family business that my parents both started, and um, it was an event planning business. I helped them grow the business. And then in 2008, when the market crashed, I was basically eating uh, popcorn for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and had to reinvent myself. However, mm-hmm. I just uh, kind of reached out to the first thing that came along. And as they say, if you don't have a, a plan in place, you're kind of just floating um, out, out, out to sea and you'll get to a port, but any port will do. So um, like many people, I didn't know which direction I was going in. And luckily for me, uh, someone was introduced to me who I actually knew in my previous life. He became a mentor to me. Um, He was in the uh, franchise uh, coaching space, took me under his wing. And 10 years later, here I am. Well, fascinating story. And, um, you know, I've interviewed two other guests about franchising and um, it's really interesting, especially for uh, people interested in starting a business. Um, you know, what, what, uh, what are the pros and cons of uh, a franchise? Oh, man, that's a loaded question. Uh, pros and cons of franchising. So I think the pros with franchising, when you think about it, are you're getting a recipe for success. Right. And the good franchisors have a really good recipe. And what you're trying to figure out as the person who's exploring these different opportunities is do I like the recipe for me and my family? Right. Because people are successful in the really good franchise concepts and they're doing well. But that doesn't mean just because they decided to make that investment that you're going to like it as well. The franchisor has gone through the trials and tribulations. Right. So you're paying a, a, a fee for the long term, but your uh, window or, or runway to uh, speed up the process to uh, get to uh, quicker profitability is there. So people like that. Um, you know, when I came from the family business that my uh, parents started, we had to figure out everything. We had to figure out, you know, our branding. We had to figure out our logo. We had to figure out our tagline. We had to figure out where to market, when to market, how often to market, right? How were we going to pay for advertising? Where were we going to pay for advertising? How were we uh, going to leverage economies of scale, which we couldn't because we were only one location. So that's just like a small snippet of what it means to be a business owner. And when you look at what the franchisor is giving you, they're giving you all of that so you don't even have to think about it. And then again, you're trying to figure out, do I like that support that they're giving me to run the business? As far as the cons go, you know, there's a franchise fee involved, right? So you're paying into this system. It's a it's a one-time fee. Um, other fees that you'll hear about are royalties, right? You're paying um, anywhere from 5%, 10 to maybe even 15% on your uh, gross revenue. And you have to decide, hey, do I want to pay those fees? I always say the price is worth the admission, right? Because you have 750,000 units out there, locations or territories in franchising. There's over 3,800 concepts out there. So there's, there's people that are having success. You're trying to figure out, do I like that again, that recipe for success. And if I'm going to pay those fees, um, and you also have to follow a process, right? So if you are a, an entrepreneur who really wants to have a lot of creativity, who really wants to, um, make it their own and put their own stamp on it, then franchising, um, is probably not the right path for you. 
and I'll, I'll use this example. There's so many more concepts than um, fast food, but McDonald's is a great example of the following. If you like mashed potatoes and everybody in your community loves mashed potatoes and you know that you could make a killing selling mashed potatoes at your McDonald's location, you can't substitute french fries for mashed potatoes so <laughs> you have to follow a system yeah so those are the cons yeah it's interesting because um you know you go i go into google and um basically there's like there's like you know thousands and so how do we how do you find the right fit and um you know what are some kind of criteria to look for that's the biggest challenge for everybody. So there's 3,800 concepts according to the International Franchise Association. Um, your point about Google is, is well taken. I Google the word franchise or franchising about once a month. There's over a billion results, okay? And then everybody's an award winner, right? Everyone's a number one this and a top five that. And so there's a lot of noise and it's very overwhelming. So the biggest challenge for everybody is how do you distill it down? So I always recommend everybody, you should work with a franchise coach, right? Find somebody that you like, find somebody that you can align with, somebody that is really going to be a good kind of uh, advisory board member for yourself as you're trying to decide what's the right fit for you. So the process that I take my clients through is a very specific, methodical process. And what I always share with clients is my role for them is I'm a coach, I'm a sounding board, I'm a guide, and most importantly, I'm there to challenge your assumptions and perceptions, right? Because what we want to do is kind of peel back that layer of the onion to see if there is something there that you wouldn't have otherwise known, right? So I'm going to give you that different set of lenses to look through when you're exploring franchise. When you're going through the process of, of, of looking for a franchise, when I sit down with a client, we're always talking about where are you now and where do you want to be, right? So if you could write the perfect movie script for this next chapter in your life, what would that look like? And so through a series of conversations and really understanding what their ideal preferred scenario is like, I then digest all of that information and come back to them with franchise concepts that are in alignment with everything that they shared with me. And then together, collaboratively, we figure out which ones to explore. And that's something that people should know is that it's all about exploration, right? It's not about buying a franchise. I mean, yes, if a client goes into a franchise, it's great. They're happy. They found something that they liked. I'm happy for them. I am also compensated that way. Uh, most people don't realize this, but uh, for franchise coaches out there, we are all compensated by the franchisor if a client goes into that concept. And that's an industry standard across the board. You know, most people don't go into franchising, though. So the whole idea of working together is we want them to get enough information and the right information to make a well-informed decision to say, hey, this is the right fit for me or this isn't the right fit for me. And maybe let's look at, you know, a couple of different concepts to see if there is a right fit. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, follow up, which is interesting because, uh, fr you know, franchise coach, uh, you know, what sort of... Um, things can uh should you look out for you know especially um especially in the contract or when you know you mentioned selection but uh what other things can a franchise coach help with um people that are exploring franchise yeah besides weeding through that noise and that overwhelming space so there's four things that i look for to share um different concepts with clients that they're going to appreciate looking at so the first thing is concepts that have longevity. Most of the concepts that I'm sharing with clients have longevity. Not all of them because there's new concepts every day, new brands. You want to keep it fresh, but that's an important piece. Um, organizations that are well-known in their space. So it's not Chick-fil-A, it's not McDonald's, it's not Subway, you know, all recognizable names, but organizations or brands that are well-known in the franchise space. The third piece is good ROI right? What does that mean? So most of my clients um, have made six figures and they want to know that at some point they can get back to those numbers. So they want to know that when they speak to other franchisees in the system, 
that they're going to hear, hey, I'm making this salary and I know I can get back to that salary too. And the last thing is the fourth thing that we look for is companies that are reputable, right? Because there's good companies out there in the franchise space and there's a ton of bad companies in the franchise space. So, you know, you want people to have a good exploration process. So it's that longevity, it's uh, brands that are well-known, brands that have good good ROI, and the last thing is uh, brands that are going to be reputable to work with. Then to break it down even further, the client is the one who's doing the heavy lift. So I'm like the matchmaker, right? You tell me all the things that you want out of your business model, and I'm matching you to those concepts. My clients are doing the heavy work. So what happens is when I introduce them to those franchise, my clients are the ones who are going to speak to the franchisor initially with an introductory phone call. The franchisor may have them join a pre-recorded webinar. They may have them join a, a live webinar where they get to speak to other franchisees. They'll speak to those leaders in the organization that they might be interacting with or who are going to help them. Every franchise has a FDD, the franchise disclosure document, which is what they'll give to the prospective franchisee to review. It tells them uh, it gives them a, a ton of information about the business model. And then the best part of the whole exploration process is that you get to then speak to all the franchisees that came before you to validate whether or not, you know, the franchisor is sharing information that is resonating or what the current franchisees are experiencing. And then when it comes down to the finance and reading the franchise agreement, I always share with clients that you should be building your advisory board. So one good thing to do is find a good franchise attorney to work with. Mm-hmm to review your franchise agreement. Um, That's really an important piece because although the franchisor might not be willing to change anything in the franchise agreement, at least you have a second set of eyes on the agreement to highlight and point out anything Um, that you should be really aware of or that might cause a hurdle in the future. And then in terms of the finances, um, clients will put together their own projections, which I will uh, guide them, help guide them along with. Um, They may want to speak to their uh, own uh, CPA or whoever helps them with their um, accounting. Um, So providing them with a lot of resources to help them make a well-informed decision. So I know that's a long uh, answer to your question, but it's a really, a really important one. And what's interesting is, you know, it's kind of like you have a guide, you know, someone they can help guide you so that you know you don't have to make the mistakes. What are some of the hottest niches or some of the fastest growing niches that franchise you find them in? So I I don't like to work with the hottest concepts, <laughs> right? Because typically they're fads, right? So cupcakeries, ice cream, yogurt places, you know, popcorn. They they're here for a short while. Um so I could tell you what clients are really interested in. A lot of my clients um, are typically 50 to 60 years old. Uh, When the pandemic hit, I started to um, speak to a lot of clients who I would say were kind of in that 44 to 49 range that that picked up a bit. People were reevaluating themselves. And the concepts that I see clients have a high interest level in or or verticals are uh, senior care. Right, because I think the statistic is uh, every day ten thousand uh, people are turning sixty or sixty-five. So senior care is big. Anything with pets and pet care is big. Uh-huh. Uh, boutique fitness, right? Everybody wants to lead a healthier lifestyle. That's not going anywhere. And then home improvement concepts, things that are uh, anything around the home. Those are popular categories that people want to explore. Okay. Um, and how do you, you know, once they decide on a niche and, uh, you know, work with a coach, uh, how do people kind of ballpark? Can they afford a franchise? Good, good, good question. Going into a franchise, uh, is very similar to buying a home. Typically you're putting about 20% down and Mm. then you're financing the rest. 
So there's different ways to finance your investment, right? Different funding vehicles. So a very popular one is the SBA loan, right? The Small Business Administration loan. You could speak to a local bank that you have a relationship with. Um, And then there's another program called a rollover for business startups, which is um, basically rolling over part of your 401k into uh-huh. new your, into your new business and you can do that without penalty so you can actually access those funds before um the prescribed age limit without penalty and there's certain companies that specifically handle that rollover and clients have two philosophy that file philosophies there some clients say i would never touch my nest egg that's for my future and other clients say well you know what I have money there. I'll use a little bit of it to invest in myself and I'm okay because I've, you know, I'm able to um, uh, run the numbers and I've managed that risk. So, um, you know, that's a couple of different ways that people will fund the business. And then the other thing that people should keep in mind is most of my clients invest anywhere from about $450,000 down to about $100,000, right? And again, they're only putting about that 20% down. A lot of times clients have a perception that they're going to have to invest a million dollars, right? And that comes from, we've all been conditioned to think about McDonald's as a franchise, and that's over a million dollar investment. And people just automatically assume assume that there's a million dollar investment, but that really is um, not the case. There's plenty of uh, affordable franchises that will also allow you to make a really good income. So the you don't have to invest a million to make a million, right? The uh-huh. amount that you invest doesn't correlate with the amount of money that you're actually going to make. It, it's quite different. Really, uh, this was really a good conversation about franchising and, um, and uh, you know, kind of well, one final question is, you know, people sure. are interested. Um, how do you, you talk about identifying good and steer clear of the bad ones? Um, are there any red flags or things that you can help um, people notice before, you know, to prevent mistakes? Yeah, I think when I think with working with a coach is helpful. But if you're if you're going at this alone, when you're looking in the franchise disclosure document, you're going to see an area for litigation. Okay. So, you know, a slip and fall might not be a huge pause for concern, but if you see that the franchise are suing the franchisor repeatedly, that's a red flag right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you see that the franchisor is making a bulk of their money from the franchise fees Mm -hmm. and not the royalties, that's a red flag, right? Because the franchisors, the franchisors are in business for one reason, to make money, okay? They make money, they make more money when you make more money because they're making money off of the revenues. So in theory, if the franchisor is good, they're going to want to provide you with a ton of support and all the right tools for you really to grow a robust and scalable business, okay? And so you want to be able to see that that franchisor is growing year over year, where more and more people are investing in the model, okay, and their royalties are their 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 uh, revenue that the franchise is generating is really from the royalties and not the franchise fees, where they're just churning and burning people through the process. So those are just a couple of red flags that you should look at. And then I guess the one final thing I'll say is, when you speak to other franchisees, what are they saying to you? Are they happy that they went into the franchise system? Did do they did did or is the support before they open their doors, when they open the doors, and ongoing really good? Right? Are they making the money that they want to make? Are they hitting the goals that they want to hit? And after you have five, six plus of those conversations, you're going to get a really good feel for this model. And to say, okay, these five, six, eight people that I spoke to are really happy. I'm getting good feedback and I'm getting a good vibe from the franchise. Yeah. What a wonderful way to um, end the conversation. And Leslie, how do people reach out to you, follow you, contact you? Um, How can they do that? 
Thanks for asking. Um, my, my website is easy. It's franchisecoachonline.com. And if anybody wants to hook up with me on um, LinkedIn, I'm the only Harris Gubin out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really easy to find. Yeah. And for all the listeners out there, let's thank uh, Harris for coming onto the show, talking about franchises, why it's um, important to explore franchising now. He's on LinkedIn as well as his website, Franchise Coach Online. All those resources will be in the links and show notes. And with that, thanks for coming onto the show. Thanks for having me, Chris.